Hello everyone, Aaron here from ASM Computing. Today we're going to be doing a tutorial to make a jQuery banner rotator. Now this can be used to make an image rotator. You can have it wherever you like on the site. You can have other sizes than what I've got, but it's best to keep all your pictures to the same size. Um, and obviously you can use as many pictures as you like. I'm only using five because I don't want to overdo it. So I just thought I'd keep it as five just for the tutorial sake. And mine are exactly the same pictures, but I've just changed the background colour. And obviously uh, labelled each one as banner one, two, three, four and five. Just so then you guys can distinguish each banner as it flicks through. So uh, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to show you exactly what it looks like. So uh, I've just opened it up where it's just about to come to the end of uh, my banners. So it should now go to banner 1. And it will just keep circling through till it reaches banner 5. And then it will go back to banner 1. And it will just keep basically doing that over and over and over. So it's just a, an easy way to change the content of your banner or your pictures. Just so then you're not stuck with the same picture for so long before you decide oh okay yeah let's change our picture on the site some people do tend to get bored of looking at the same thing over and over so obviously with this they have no reason to say that it's the same same site because we're then changing up the content without actually having to upload the pictures our, ourselves so I'll get to banner 5 as I said and it'll go back to banner 1 and it'll just start again so as you can see, obviously they're all the same, same picture, I've just literally changed the colours. So, and I've done mine in Fireworks. Um, you can actually do yours, Fireworks, Photoshop, uh, basically any Illustrator or design um, application that you like. You can even use Flash. You can make Flash uh, banners and then obviously use jQuery and uh, obviously just put them where I'll show that where the images should go you just replace with the embed code for your flash uh, sorry for your flash file for each of your banners or then again you could just make it straight from flash but for you guys that aren't great with coding um, I'm just going to show you exactly how to do this for jQuery and uh, yeah so let's minimize that and let's uh sorry about that guys let's uh open up our dreamweaver sorry i'm just looking at two screens here at the moment because i'm recording on my little screen and uh i've got my timer and that on the other screen so i have to keep looking over just to check on the time Realistically, I'd like to try and keep this to two videos. I'd like this one, this first video, to obviously explain what we're doing. And then obviously just setting out the basics, uh, getting the structure sorted out. Um, and then the second video, I'm just going to literally keep to the jQuery. Because obviously I need to try and explain the jQuery and code it at the same time. And uh, obviously it's best to keep that to one video. Because at the moment now... I'm literally just coming up to four minutes and obviously we haven't even started yet so what I'm going to do, I'm going to open up my banner.php uh, page now obviously all you need to do is just come to create new PHP but the only reason I've done this and you'll see in a minute is I've just saved this out just because I've already saved my script files in there I haven't actually got any coding in there as such, just literally what scripts I need. So I'll show you what I mean. So open that up. As you can see, this is design, if I go to live view, no, yeah, you can actually see there's nothing there. It's just a blank document. But inside the code, I've just done a jQuery image, uh, sorry, jQuery banner rotation title. And under that, I've gave my first script type as text JavaScript 
and the source is js slash jQuery 1.4.4 and jQuery 1.4.4 is the new newest jQuery library that they have available and if you'd like to download that just uh, head over to jQuery.com um, well, then again if I just quickly uh, open this up for you go to jQuery.com and we want to come to grab the latest version uh, see so the, the newest release now is uh, version 1.5.1 .1. so uh, what I'm going to do I'm going to download later I'm not going to do it at the moment but later I'm going to download the newest version and uh, make sure I've got it sitting on my local computer that way I can then obviously upload it to my server for each site that I may need to use jQuery with but at the moment I'm using 1.4.4 and it does still work but obviously I will be up upgrading it so that's where you go and all you need to do you can download the minified and gzipped version which is just a smaller package or you can download the, the develop one, development one sorry and uh, that's just basically the same file but it's a full um, library for jQuery so I recommend for people that actually do websites and obviously designing a lot of them is to actually download their library because it's just easier for people to then include it within each website they make so uh, yeah so that's jQuery.com and as I said, just download the latest uh, the latest library. Let's see current release, and that will tell you exactly which release is newest. And then you can compare that to whichever library you have. So let's uh, close that. Let's minimise that back down. Let's back into J uh, Dreamweaver. And as I said, all I've got is a standard HTML document, and I've just included my two scripts for my jQuery which was my library and this one exactly the same except the source is a banner changer.js now this is going to obviously be where my jQuery coding is going to go and I need to include that in to this file to obviously make my banners do what I need to do now the reason I've got js slash basically that means that I've got a folder called js and this backslash represents that we want to go into that folder. So I want to go into my JS folder and find inside that folder jQuery.1.4.4.js. So basically we're looking in a folder for that file. So that's what that backslash represents. And the JS obviously just stands for the folder name. Okay, enough of the jibber jabber. Let's uh, start off with getting some of this... Uh, structure laid out so between the body tags we're going to start with a div and I'm going to give that a div ID of wrapper as a lot of people use it's just an easier way to distinguish obviously exactly what you've got sitting inside of your body and it's more or less like a container so we can keep everything into one one div you can use tables but just for this tutorial I'm using divs it just makes it so much easier to work with because you know obviously with jQuery you need to target the IDs and or, or names but I just prefer to use uh, divs just for using with jQuery and what I'm doing at the moment is actually putting a comment after the ending of my wrapper div and I'll just uh, so I'll just finish this off. So, and basically, all I'm doing is just putting a line comment, which is a my uh, sorry a less than symbol, an exclamation mark, and two minus signs. And then I've just put n wrapper div. And then on the end of that, I've got two minus signs and a greater than symbol. And all that does is just puts a code comment. So then I can. Uh, mark out exactly which div ends within 
which div starts, if you like, if you understand that. So it's just an easier way to know exactly where we're ending our divs. So now we've got our wrapper div. Um, if I go back to design, you'll just see that we've got a blank div, nothing inside it. So I'm going to come down and I'm going to make another div. And this time I'm going to give this an ID and I'm going to call this header underscore holder just to distinguish exactly what this one is. You can, as I said, you can name these whatever you like, but you just need to make sure that when it comes to your CSS and your jQuery that you uh, obviously name them exactly what they are and change them to what they should be for whatever you name yours um, let's just end I'll just say header holder div and close that one off oh see I've done that one wrong that one wrong there should be that and uh, remove that one back on and put some space here. Okay, so now we have them set up. You won't actually see anything different again. It just looks like one wrapper. Um, so inside of that, we're going to do a div. And this time we're going to give it a class. Now classes are used once... Uh, Classes are mainly used for if you're going to be using this more and more and more and more. So if you have, as we are, going to be using five different images, we need to give it a class so then we can be able to use it again and again. If we was to give it an ID, we will only be allowed to use it once and once only. Obviously an ID just targets one specific div, whereas a, a class can, spe uh, sorry, a class can specify to more than one div so we can have five different divs on our page with a class of say image one two three four and five or better still that's a bad example we could have a sorry we can have a class of uh, image all the way through and basically any divs that pick up that class of image will be able to use that throughout the page so it's just an easier way to be able to use it more and more and more and more throughout the pages that we have. Sorry, I keep gibbering on, guys. I'm just trying to explain as best I can for you as we go. So I'm coming up to 13 minutes on my time, so I need to try and get this done, uh, this part, so we can obviously move on to the next. So let's call this banner. And... What I'm, gonna, I'm not actually going to bother commenting out these ones. I'm just going to keep these like this. So underneath that, I'm going to give it another div. I'm going to align that to the center because I want these to sit on the center of the page. And obviously show up div, div, align, center. So we'll close that one off as well. And inside of here, is where we're going to add our images or whichever you want to use. So I'm going to be using my images. So the source for me, oh, sorry guys, the source for me is going to be equal to, and it's going to be in my images folder, and I called mine banner1.jpg, and let's end that. Close that. Now, I'm not going to specify any sizes here because I'm going to be doing all that with the CSS. So whichever image gets put in should obviously fit exactly to that size. So all I'm going to do is just copy them four lines of code. And I'm just going to paste it another four times. And I'm just going to come up and I'll change this one to two. I'll change this one to three. This one to four, this one to five. Now I'm going to save that and come back to design. You can now see that I've got my five images sitting there and they're all underneath each other. Now don't worry, obviously with the CSS we're going to be uh, changing this up. So uh, what 
what I'm going to do, I'm going to stop the video here, just as I'm coming up to uh, my 16th minute, and um, I don't want to go too long, because obviously it's going to take forever to upload these to YouTube, um, so I'm going to stop it here, and I promise on the next video, we're going to get straight onto the CSS, as it's only a couple of lines, and then we're going to bang out the jQuery, so uh, look out for part two, and it'll be up shortly, cheers guys.